All right, North Central Connected, episode 31. It's December. But who's count? <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool that we've been doing this for three years now, three years and four months. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> One year ago to, to yesterday, I guess, I was at home doing it in my, in my wife's office. <laughs> Uh, under COVID quarantine, <laughs> we had the that was the easiest one for me to edit because it was just set up the the, the four square and you know mm-hmm. just record everybody's Zoom. So maybe looks, we should do that again. We we'll just start <laughs> staying in our office. <laughs> it's it's a it's a long walk from across the hall, isn't it? It is. It is. All right. My name is Justin Jaggers. I'm your media specialist. I am joined once again by our CEO and general manager Kevin Doddridge. Merry Christmas, everyone. Our uh, Director of Safety and Loss Control, J.D. Cox. Good to be with you. And our Director of Marketing and Business Development, Michael Bellapani. Good to do this. It's been a while. It, it has been two and a half months, I think. Since so, we did the number 30? Since we did number 30. I'm Now I'm worried about I'm count my... i got to make sure I count the episodes right. All right, so we're going to go straight into it. And uh, Kevin, it seems like for the past two years, we just... It just needs to be the connect segment. I don't, I don't know what we did prior to getting in the high-speed internet business. Uh, <laughs> actually conducted an interview with uh, Tony Lopesco on this yesterday. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's good to, to, to go back and see how everything started and see how far we've come. We, um, you know, we really got active in this a little over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I looked up and we got 1,100 customers right now. Mm-hmm. And... You know, we're, we're approaching $13 million worth of investment. And that, that's been a very sound investment on our part. We're not one of these co-ops that have, um, you know, qualified for tremendous amounts of grants, even though some have been out there. But we have used the grant money, and we've matched it, and we've used it very responsibly, in my opinion, that we've gone to the people that are underserved. Um, I've talked in the past on some of the challenges that we have. I mean, we're... We're like everyone else. We're, we're kind of hitting some supply chain issues, and we're having some issues. It's not that we've run out of the, the product fiber, but uh, procuring it is difficult. And there's modems and electronics that go along with this, and, and, and even labor. So uh, their difficulty, you know, we, and as I tell people, we manage it. We, we get together once or twice a week and see where we are and see where we're going to head next week, and it's, a, it's an ever-changing landscape. But we're still excited about it, and we're excited about – you know, I, I've, I've made this probably overly obvious, but at no point did the cooperatives ever approach either the state government or the federal government and say, to do this, we got to have money and we're not going to get into the business without grants. Um, but grants were made available, you know, initially through RDAW funds that we did not qualify for. Then you had CARES Act money that uh, put us, uh, I think it was a little bit over $2 million, was mm-hmm. it, somewhere in there, yeah. and we matched that. And, um, you know, with I can't even remember the name of all the legislation that they're proposing now. All the different in acronyms. Washington, all the acronyms <laughs> and all that. But I believe the latest is that that's been approved is from the American Recovery Plan. And some of the other grants, you know, the money came to Jackson. We applied to the state once it was there because it was designated for us. So we made application and received some grant money. This is going to be a little bit different. The American Recovery Plan has set aside a tremendous amount of money. I think as much as 162 million might could be allocated to Mississippi for high speed mm-hmm. internet. Um, North Central has made an application for a grant uh, in the neighborhood of $25 million. Um, I don't know if we'll get it or not. All the cooperatives put together throughout the state have um, applied for somewhere around $450 million. So. For those of you that went into basic math, 450 million, and there's 162 there, someone's not going to get everything they want. Yeah. <clears throat> so how we get this allocated, I'm not sure. But um, I've, I've got to, I'm, I'm proud of the effort that North Central's made in getting high-speed internet out into the rural area, but really proud of the entire state and the way that we worked and worked together. And I really wish I had the numbers in front of me, the, 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 uh, the investment that's been made statewide the the hundreds of miles of fiber that have been built really in just a year mm-hmm. uh, it is incredible it is going to be a altering moment for this state um, just incredible what's what's taken place uh, most of the funds allocated up till now have already been spent uh, so anything going forward is just going to be more so I, I think we're just really on the cusp of something great for our state 
and, and you know, it, it's, it's great that we can be a part of it. We're going to get this uh, $25 million, hopefully, or a portion of it, and there's a very good chance that this would help us build out all of the unserved areas or underserved areas in the North Central Service Area. question that comes up quite a bit is, what about those areas outside of our electric service area? If there's grant money available, we will apply for it. Mm -hmm. It gets a little trickier when you get out of our service area, but not so tricky that, that we can't do it. So is there a notion that we might could build fiber and extend uh, down 78 out of our service area, headed east toward Holly Springs and back toward Potts Camp? That could happen. Uh, could we head out 72 toward Sladen, Mount Pleasant, Lamar? Absolutely. It's possible. Does it mean we're going to be able to do it? As, as we say every week when we talk about fiber, I'm not sure, but we certainly want to try. So we're going to try to get as many resources together as we can, not just money, human resources in the form of uh, engineering consultants, uh, labor, and see if we can't put together several projects where we're trying to work grant projects and also remember um, our current membership in DeSoto County and back to the west that may already have a high-speed product, but some of them still would prefer us because... Um, I don't know where some of these telecom companies are located, but I know where North Central is, and we're sitting there right now. And I know if you have an issue with your high-speed Internet, the people in this room right here are the ones that can take care of it for you, and I mm -hmm. think that's an advantage that we have. So I know it's been a topic of conversation, and it will be for a long time going forward because it's just where most of the interest is. Uh, and one <coughs> of the things that's come up quite often, I've been really proud of the uh, the availability of shovel-ready, so to speak, projects, planning mm -hmm. that has already been done. So when funds do become available, North Central is ready to act on that. People across the state, other cooperatives are ready to. So I think the planning aspect of it and just having those uh, shovel-ready projects ready to go has been a tremendous help as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what folks don't realize is that, you know, they, they think that they may think on, off of uh, – on the face of it, we're just working in these three phases that we're building mm -hmm. in right now. What they're not seeing is that we're doing the tree trimming, we're doing the engineering work in the next two and three phases to prepare for what's going to come in and the And we future. got a tremendous amount on paper. That's right. And budgeting for mm -hmm. even more. So yeah, We're really good at building mainline fiber right now, and the, and the slowdown is, <laughs> is when we get down to the street level and when we get down to what, what tears up your yard. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's where the labor constraint is. Uh, we are continuously talking about solutions for that aspect of it. And those of you that have been on that list and waiting for us to come locate that service to your house, we're coming. Uh, we know you, you want it, uh, and we're, we're trying our best to get to, to that point to where we can knock 10 or 12 out a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I, I just don't want to forget about Kevin talks about often is just the other benefits that all this fiber-ready work, uh, all the other benefits that's going to provide, uh, the reliability of our system, the hardening of our system, uh, especially going into, you know, the winter time and, you know, possibly the, the weather that could be associated with that, uh, the hardening of the system is going to really pay dividends for us. You set me up for that, didn't you? Did you plan on doing that? Pow! <laughs> One thing we've improved on in three years. Transitioning. Transitions. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> So it doesn't sound like we're reading off of cute, cute cards. <laughs> Thank you, Justin, for... Yeah. Well, if you've noticed, I've been taking a sip of coffee because I've been coughing, because, and it's not COVID-related. It's the fact that it's uh, December and it's 70-something degrees outside. Um, and that, that kind of is indicative of the weather that we have down here. And I do want to mention something about the weather. Uh, our system, you know, we've done a lot of maintenance on it to accommodate the fiber, and I've got to really brag on the performance of our distribution system. It has just performed very well through all types of storms. And that's something that you can take for granted. But uh, for y'all that are, that are watching and listening, please don't take that for granted. We're entering a period right now, uh, in the last four years, if, I'm, if my calendar is correct, five years probably, but more, more specific, we have had anything from tornadoes, to ice storms in December. With the way the weather changes, the heat today, the, 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 the anticipation of cold weather, precipitation, we have had all types of weather-related events occur in December. And I know we anticipate them in January and February, but uh, we prepare um, a great deal for this. This is, this is when 
Uh, our linemen show what they're made of. All of our other employees just through planning and execution show what they're made of. Um, but what I want to is, is, is uh, our membership out there in the community, make sure you're prepared as well. We have not had an instance around here to where people did without power, I don't think, for more than four days, probably since somewhere around 2009. Mm -hmm. And that's when we had a series of tornadoes hit Olive Branch and Bahia concurrently. Um, Y'all, please remember that could happen again. Mm -hmm. I th and I think sometimes if it hasn't happened over a span of time, we find ourselves just ill-prepared for it. So it can happen again. We are preparing for it, making sure that we're working through supply chain issues and that we have the storm inventory on hand, the labor on hand, the backup labor on hand. But what we do need uh, you know, to protect you is to make sure that you have a storm plan in place uh, because especially these December events, they, they can creep up on you pretty quick and you don't want to find yourself unprepared. Absolutely. And, and you know, all of the planning and stuff that we do here, um, you know, just asking the membership to think about, you know, just simple things, water, batteries, make sure your cell phones and iPads and those devices are, are charged up and ready. If you have medicine that, that has a special care, Get innovative. If your medicine needs to be refrigerated and it's 30 degrees outside, you might can put it outside. Mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if your cell phone goes down, you might be able to charge it in your vehicle if you have enough gas and, and want to do that safely to avoid uh, carbon dioxide poisoning. But yep. there, there are, you know, think these things through and think you know, how much water you may need a day. Just different things like that. Where you depend on electricity mm -hmm. and, and how you do without it for a prolonged amount of time. And the Mississippi uh, Emergency Management Association, they've really done a great job on their website of of preparedness do, yeah. plans so I, I would encourage you you know uh, i know we talk about uh these things and we may throw a few things out there but really uh if you'll go to their website they have a comprehensive list by category of of types of events that could happen and things that you may want to keep in mind to have on hand uh, so uh, please uh, check that website out i think there's a lot of good information there generator safety is is so important in times like that Generators are obviously convenient, uh, but there's some things that you need to make sure that you do and things that you if don't If I recall, need to do. if you go back last year to the hurricanes that hit South Louisiana, if, if I'm correct, every fatality was directly related to the use of a generator. Uh, and early on, uh, I, I want to say like the first six or seven fatalities that they had were associated with uh, something happened with a generator. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So... Uh, is, is there more for from safety? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. He transitioned us. Transitioned it was, us. It was, well, just uh, uh, avoiding the awkward pause. <laughs> uh, well, in, in addition to you know weather preparedness and things like that that we need to think about, you know that that leads right into uh, you know Christmas is coming up. People are stringing lights all around the house, uh, all in the neighborhoods. I've I've seen a lot of it already show up on social media and things like that. Special Guilty. time of the year. <laughs> yep. Ab absolutely. Um, so just want to remind uh, folks of a, a few safety things out there. If you're putting lights outside, you know, make sure those lights are rated to be outdoors and that you're not using indoor lights. Uh, for a consumption uh, purpose, make sure if you can that they're LED lights. Uh, really uh, saves a lot on uh, the electric mm -hmm. bill and you don't have the associated heating uh, of the older traditional lights, things of that nature. Uh, don't overload electrical circuits. Uh, you know, I just think about you all. You can do that. I just think about all the Christmas movies that we've all grown up watching <laughs> over the years, and you know the the thousand strands of lights that they put together and all that stuff. But that that really is of concern uh, every year at Christmas. People overloading the circuitry in their house with lights. Seeing how fast the meter can start spinning. Absolutely, <laughs> and, and then especially you know when you start applying those lights, especially if they're not LED lights to Christmas trees. If it's a real Christmas tree. Make sure that you keep plenty of water in the tree so that it doesn't dry out. And uh, uh, every year, uh, you know how safety guys are. They love statistics. But there's a couple of hundred houses a year burn up every year because of, of lighting and, and trees that weren't watered properly and things of that nature. Uh, and uh, ladder safety. Again, going back to the movies that we all watch, people outside stapling lights all over their houses, taping them to gutters and all of the things that we do. Um, you know, and, and they'll make a two before ladder to stand on, you know, so make sure that you, uh, that you have a, an appropriate ladder that's safe. 
Uh, make sure you're not uh, using that ladder around, around electrical lines and things of that nature. Um, and uh, be careful with the candles. Um, people love to burn candles this time of year. Um, my house, we're certainly not excluded. We from light that. our candles with the remote control. I've learned. <laughs> you just point at them and hit the remote. And <laughs> what times we live in? <laughs> Fireplaces, candles, whatever. Just it's... pick up the cell phone and strike them. It, it's all working. <laughs> and uh, so, just that's just a few things to keep in mind as far as safety. And one other thing that I would like to talk about is uh, we have a very successful uh, line worker program. Uh, here uh, in Olive Branch, uh, the Northwest Community College line worker program uh, has had about three classes to graduate now. You know, and the thing that's interesting about it, as word gets out of, uh, about the line worker school, uh, it's a 16-week course. Um, when the students come out of it, they have a they have various credentials, uh, the, the appropriate commercial driver's license, things of that nature. But what's interesting about this whole process is now we're getting to the point that even before they graduate, 75% of the class has a job before they ever even graduate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these are, uh, and I shouldn't say job, I, I want to correct myself there, uh, it's a career. Um, you know, to me, the, the line worker program and the way people are approach it, approaching um, this profession now reminds me of how people approach nursing. Uh, it, it's, it's really, I feel like nursing is really just a, a very high educated apprenticeship program basically. And I feel like, uh, you know, the apprenticeship program and the line worker school down at Northwest has got going. I feel like it's really evolving into something very similar. It is a career. And when so people, much opportunity that comes out mm-hmm. of it. It's, so I mean, when, when people leave that class, there is so many different directions, uh, that they can go and, and not just, um, not just have a job they can have a career uh that really will will take them you know through and provide them with benefits a great retirement one day things of that you, nature. you'll see linemen that that of course go on to continue to become linemen and crew foremen and in various aspects of leadership but you also got in your case safety mm-hmm. and loss control you, you've got system operators you got people that actually move over into the engineering <clears throat> area and start doing some design work because they've got experience, because they've built it before. You've got CEOs of utilities and electric co-ops that started off as a lineman, so uh, board of directors even. So, you know, the, the, and, and, if, and if my memory serves me correct, I say that a lot, don't I? Uh, that's my, you know. <coughs> Got to give myself some room for error. Um, there will be, the, the, the Biden administration has put up a candidate for the T- Tennessee Valley Authority board. Mm-hmm. Who started his career as a lineman in East Tennessee? So it's it's a great way to get started, and it can take you in a lot of different directions. So the the next class graduates on uh, December the eighth, and we'll be there. Uh, uh, they uh, they go through a little graduation process and do a little demonstration of some of the skills that they've learned. Uh, so if you're a business out there and you're thinking you may uh, potentially want to hire somebody that has that set of skills, like to welcome you out there you wait know. wait till we speak to them first yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> more than uh, more than welcome to uh, mm-hmm. to reach out and email us we'll give you the information about that and last thing is i'm glad that we all survived the wkrp turkey drop i <laughs> i know there's a lot of people marking themselves safe uh, from the from the turkey drop and uh so just thankful for that and um <laughs> look forward to christmas and everybody be safe absolutely speaking of christmas uh we we're back to in person, aren't we? Yeah. So I mean, la- last year they did they kind of last year it was they canceled it, right? The Christmas parade. The parade. Yeah. Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. They and, had well, yeah. they had they had an event by Hey Yeah Outdoors, but uh, oh, it was, it was the walk by. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then Olive Branch Parade was canceled, but yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to quote that that favorite Christmas Christmas movie that we all love, "Tis the season to be merry." So we're going to be <laughs> merry this weekend. Uh, the Olive Branch Christmas Parade is going to go live again through the streets of Old Town um, on December 4th, Saturday, this Saturday at 2 o'clock. So customarily, North Central has our, our float ready. We've got it done and dusted and decorated and, and ready for Santa, and, and we'll be carrying them through the streets of Isla Branch. And uh, on the following Saturday night, Bahia's Parade will go on. For Well, for this for this weekend, if you look at our social media, there is a map yeah. now mm-hmm. of uh, where the old Olive Branch uh parade will be happening yeah so. and and there's really not a bad 
place mm-hmm. to catch the parade. I, I will caution folks that, that towards the end of the parade, as you go up towards Piggly Wiggly and up Cockrum, we tend to run out of candy. <laughs> <laughs> So early on in the parade is better. <laughs> our, yeah. our, our people get excited. That's right. <laughs> you know, it just occurred to me, we're talking about the parade route goes through um, Old Town. When I was a kid, that was just called Town. Town. <laughs> Current Town. We could That's say right. the Recreation District. Now. Going, so, through you know. the, going through the town. Yeah. So. So. But yeah, we're excited about age. that. <laughs> um, but but if you can, police attend. It's, it's fun for all ages. Um Olive Branch Saturday, December fourth, and Bahia on Saturday, December eleventh, at six p.m. I believe theirs is. So, um, all kind of stuff going on this time of year. But my favorite part is is just the celebrations and recognition. We'll be getting together uh, as a group of employees, as a North Central family, to share a meal uh, at some point this month and celebrate service awards we have got a number of employees that are recognizing 35 30 year 25 and 20 year anniversaries and that's just a testament to what a great place this is to work mm-hmm. and Absolutely. um the co-op family is is very tight so we, we're going to celebrate one another but we're also going to celebrate together in helping our communities as we always do mm-hmm. during thanksgiving we had the opportunity to go and deliver 140 meals 150 150 we get we deliver sorry we delivered 140 and then donated uh 10 what we had left over 10 extra boxes to healing hands oh cool yeah yeah i I was out so i didn't know that part but uh you know we always come out and force during this time of year and especially during thanksgiving we we hand pack food boxes the boxes donated by diamond comics so Mm -hmm. thank you to them for Mm -hmm. that um, and thank you to Reed's uh, and Bahia for helping us uh, assemble the food. Um, but to come together and to have a project like that and to, to deliver a meal and, and, and look a, an elderly f- person in the face and, and um, just, just greet them and wish them a happy Thanksgiving was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll continue to do other projects like that through Christmas. Um, but one thing I'm really excited about is the community care fund uh, is back. And this is something that I think we ran an article in, in the today in Mississippi about this Over last the summer. year. Yep. But TVA has, has established a matching grant uh, program uh, for all seven States um, that they cover. And this is designed to help folks during COVID recovery. Um, but it, they've expanded the parameters of this grant to where we'll be able to help more nonprofits and different projects uh, to help improve the quality of life in the areas that we serve. So we have funded that grant. We've got $80,000 with the Community Foundation mm-hmm. together with uh, TVA's contribution. That's our total. We'll be out seeking matching grants to grow that pot of money and look for projects uh, in our service area that will help improve the lives of those that we serve. So. Yeah. Sounds like one of those infomercials, but there's more. But there we is. come up with 40000 you give it to TVA, and there's more. And then there's a possibility there could be more. Well, hey, That's one of our listeners may be on the board of a nonprofit or may be in charge of a, a foundation. So yeah. if you are looking to, a great uh, investment. To, uh, to make a donation before year ends, you may contact the Community Foundation of Northwest Mississippi uh, in Hernando because they are administrating this this fund and um, mm-hmm. they can assist you with making that contribution. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of the Community Foundation, I do want to offer a promotion for the 22nd annual Crystal Ball, which benefits the Community Foundation of Northwest a Mississippi. A night in Havana. And yeah, the theme is a night in Havana. It's going to be January 15th mm-hmm. uh, at the arena, multi-purpose arena in South Haven. Um, this is a 22nd event. Last year's was virtual. Uh, and this year we're actually going to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Community Foundation, uh, the formation of the foundation. So uh, fun night out, uh, dinner, dancing, great meal, auction items. Um, and all of it goes to... Um, raise funds to help support the efforts of the Community Foundation of Northwest Mississippi. Great organization that covers an 11 county footprint in Northwest Mississippi down into the Delta. Mm -hmm. Um, And I believe at last count, they had supported 850 nonprofits, over 850 nonprofits and charities. Whenever I cut the spots for them, I just say over 800, and it kind of covers it. So. Yeah, it yeah. does. <laughs> well, we, we like to round up, so we're over 850 yeah. now. So. so it's a night um, in Havana. A night in Havana. Do and we have to wear a tie? 
Yes. Can we or wear our Tony time. Montana Scarface outfit? <laughs> you could. I suppose. You could. If you still have yours, if, if memory serves. I still serves. have mine, that's great. <laughs> that's great. But the highlight of the event, I'll tell you this, we do honor a star of hope, and that's a, a, a notable figure from Mississippi or that lives in Mississippi that's a champion for our state. Mm-hmm. And we'll be honoring Aaron and Ben Napier. Uh, from HGTV's hometown, and they've got a couple other stores uh, or shows and, and stores, um, but they will be there at the event. Uh, mm-hmm. We've received confirmation that their hotel rooms are booked, and we'll be happy to bestow this honor on them uh, to to be the stars of hope for Mississippi. Um, and if you would uh, are interested in attending or sponsoring, please visit cfnm.org, cfnm.org, or contact the Community Foundation of Northwest Mississippi in Hernando. Uh, and lastly, just we're, we're kind of gearing up for an active legislative session. Hold on to your wallets. The legislators are coming back to Jackson. Um, no, in all, in all seriousness, it will be uh, good to get back to Jackson to have a, a what would hopefully be a normal legislative session if there is such a thing. Um, and as... As you know, he had me good to get back to Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> Ever the optimist. <laughs> <laughs> Try and stay positive. There you yeah. go. There no, you really, go. we do. We've got great friends in Jacks and great supporters, and the electric co ops have done great work, and we, we maintain these relationships on behalf of our members. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we constantly have a presence in Jackson uh, to do that. So uh, looking forward to gearing up and getting back to Jackson and uh, we'll try and provide information as po- as we can to, to update you, the member. Absolutely. And uh, as you are, uh, we are approach this holiday season, you know what makes a great stocking stuffer? Oh. The Musicians for Lebonner Bonner CD. It's available at musiciansforlebonner.com. We've got 40 tracks um, and the first, the first track right there is Kevin's favorite local band, Free World. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Put them> up top <laughs> we have to and then it's uh you know it's we've got it's like it, country artists rock artists uh reggae artists um americana singer songwriter everything that you think of from the memphis and mid-south area we offer on this cd how you can, can you not buy that it, it, it's it's difficult not to um, where do you get it you can get that at musiciansforlebonner.com you can get it on spotify itunes amazon music Anywhere you get good tunes, uh, you can get that. And it was, it's really funny. One of the uh, artists on here uh, this morning at 4 a.m. bought 10 copies of this. She's going to give this out of stocking stuffers. So, uh, M- Michaela Compton. So she actually wrote a song for her daughter on this. It's featured on the, the CD, album. not the cassette. The, the, no, 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 the cassettes are sold out. Yeah, okay. So yeah, <laughs> along with the eight tracks. But <laughs> we did. We might need to consider vinyl. Uh, My son has asked for vinyl for Christmas. Yeah, I got a vinyl gift yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very cool. And you we also did, we, we did too though. We yeah, we, from, the Mississippi uh, Stomp uh, gave us vinyl. Sunny uh, yeah, delivered yeah. those for us. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Sonny. They participated in the uh, the uh, the remote or sorry socially distant concert that we have available on YouTube. Um, you can check that out. Um, all of it. Search for musicians for the Bonner on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, LinkedIn. So. I, I, I think I handle like 20-something social media accounts at this point. Between North Central's and, and Musicians for Labonner and North Central Connect and North Central Connected and, and everything else. So uh, find us. Find North Central. Uh, NorthCentralElectric.com, NorthCentralConnect.com. Find us on all social media, and uh, we will see you in 2022. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.